Number six, the sixth reason why nations fail, lack of internal security. Lack of internal security. You see, the security situation in Nigeria is not complex. It's not complex at all. There's a research I did a few years ago, and there's a pattern globally. The Americans were training and funding the Taliban when they were fighting against the Russians in Afghanistan. They got to a point where the Americans lost control of the Taliban, and they became monsters. The Sudanese government, in order to control the war in the southern of Sudan, recruited the Janjaweed militia, funded them, trained them. They got to a point where they could no longer control the Janjaweed, and they became monsters. The governors from the Niger, Niger Delta region, in order to win elections, imported hands and gave it to thugs in their community to help them rig elections. But after they put them in power, they could no longer control those boys. They became militants. It's exactly the same thing that's happening with the, with the Boko Haram. The politicians brought them in, funded them to help them politically. But the problem is this. You can control the initiation of these things. You can't control how it go continues. Because these people now, they've tasted blood. They've tasted the power of having hands. Suddenly, they no longer listen to you. Everything is political construct. It's, it's, it's politics that is killing our security in this country. And the politicians who are behind it, they know each other. There are 10 people that can be arrested today. And you will not hear anything about Boko Haram again. They are. And the government know who they are. Folks, don't let's deceive ourselves. You see, one of the problems we have in Nigeria is we make things unnecessarily complicated. Simple things. And the reason they make it complicated is so that you think they are trying. <laughs> But you know, we are trying. You know, so, I mean, I, I, I know my time is limited, so, so, so I brought some books, you know, on politics and governance. If you want to know more about security, I have a book stand that I, that I have some of my books on the policing in Nigeria and all, all, the, all the nonsense that, uh, you know, the, don't, don't get me started on the police. I won't leave here today. One of the benefits of the, um, or the consequence of the 9-11 Commission in the United States is when they found out that all the terrorists that attacked the Twin Towers, they all existed in one database of one security apparatus or the other. But the problem is they were not what? Talking to each other. That led to the creation of the Department of Homeland Security in the US, and the whole idea is to mop up all those data in one place. So the way we go all over the world to secure your nation is to what? Join up your security infrastructure. In Nigeria, we are doing the opposite. The Constitution says there can only be one police in Nigeria. That's what the Constitution says. And then, what happened? In the first coup that happened in the early 60s in Nigeria, the military was very small. And they realized that the only organization that had communication links in every local government in Nigeria were the police. So the military courted the police in the early 60s. So much so, they made two of them regional governors in those days. But after the Civil War, the military are now much larger, much better equipped, and as a result, they didn't need the police again. But one thing that was clear is this. They realize that the only organization that can stop any military coup from happening in Nigeria was the police. Because the police hear about coups the same time you and I hear about it. But they legitimately are allowed to carry arms. So a decision was made to cripple the policing in Nigeria. 
And as they start doing that, they start cannibalizing it. In the mid-70s, the biggest brain of the police called the Special Branch was removed from the police, and a different institution was created. But they can't call it the police by law, so they call it a different, it became the NSO. During the Shagari administration, the NSO was changed to the SSS. So the current the SSS were fully part of the police before. And then what happened? Federal Safety Corps, um, Civil Defense, and uh, name that. You know, now in, in one of my books, I, not, I noted nine organizations that have been carved out of the police to do policing-related duties, thereby crippling budgetarily the police and making them ineffective. So we have nine cost centers, nine different departments, nine uniforms. You know what? The budget of those organizations that have been made out of the police, of six of them, the budget of, those, of six of the sub, all those organizations is bigger than the budget of the police itself. We can double or triple the budget of Nigerian police today by merging these people together. Are they not doing the same thing? So the point I'm trying to make here is lack of internal security leads to failed state. Now, the seventh one is very instructive. Nations that fail tend to have oppressed, repressed, depressed, and inactive citizens. There's no nation on earth that has ever been recorded to fail with an active and engaged citizenry. So the seventh reason why nations fail is lack of engaged citizens. And that's what I want to now zoom in on for the rest of my time. Lack of engaged citizens. Active and involved citizenry is the only rescue plan for this nation. And you need to understand how politics are played. That's why the previous speakers laid a very good foundation. Politics, yes, is a game of numbers. You know, I've been in the background of several political campaigns in this country and several African countries. And what I've learned is that for a country like Nigeria, the way politics is played in the North is not the same as being played in the South. And many Nigerians don't understand that. In the North, there are certain people called the gatekeepers. If you engage them, Forget the masses. The masses will do what they are told by those people. So the politicians focus on those gatekeepers. Keep them sweet. In the South, it's a different ballgame. Husband and wife can belong to separate parties. We are that engaged in the South. And therefore, we have more power because we are more difficult to bamboozle. So how do we get engaged? Because of time, I'm going to list, so get your pen and paper ready. I'm going to list a few ways you can be engaged. I think at the democracy event, I mentioned about 12 of them. But now I have 21 of them. So let's start. Number one, how can you be engaged? Be an informed citizen. Look for information. Be informed. I like what um, my sister said about the media in, in Nigeria. You see, what many people don't know in Nigeria is 90%, and I'm being generous, of our media in Nigeria are owned directly or indirectly by politicians. So when you see an headline in a particular newspaper, you should put your political sense on. <laughs> because you immediately know that is where that headline is coming from. But Nigerians assume the cause is there, it's correct. Especially in this day of fake news. Nigerians are very good at fake news. 